everybody, welcome to another edition of the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. K. I'll be hanging out with you today, and this is our fourth attempt at making this video, so I hope we are successful this time. We're continuing on in our series regarding cell division. Our topic for the day is going to be variation. So before anything else can go wrong, let's go ahead and get on into our objectives for the day. First thing I need you to be able to know or do by the end of this video is to describe each of these sources of genetic variation. There are three of them. And the other thing I need you to do is connect that variation to evolution. Why is variation important for evolution? So without further ado, let's do a quick overview and then talk about our sources of variation. So first of all, what is variation? Very simple. Just know that variation is any difference in genetic material. You are not the same as your brothers or sisters or your cousins, your aunts, your uncles, your parents, your grandparents. You are different from everybody. That is because you have variation in your genetics. All of your genetic material has been shuffled and sorted producing the uniqueness that is you. There are three major ways that variation occurs that you will need to know about. So the first source of variation is independent assortment. Second one is crossing over. And the third one is random fertilization. I'm going to talk about each one of those individually. So let's get on into it. First major source of variation is independent assortment. And what this is expressing is where chromosomes go during meiosis. Now, we have talked about in a previous video, in meiosis, you have got metaphase where your chromosomes line up across the middle of the cell, and then half the chromosomes, the ones that are on this side, they get dropped into one of the daughter cells, the chromosomes on this side, they get dropped into the other daughter cell. Now, when these chromosomes line up, you got to remember that half your genetic material is from your mom, half your genetic material is from your dad. So if you've only got two chromosomes, which is a very simple situation, you could have both of mom's chromosomes on this side and both of dad's chromosomes on that side, or you could have one chromosome from mom on this side and one from dad on this side, and then same thing on the other side, one from mom, one from dad on this side. This is going to have a pretty profound effect because when the cell divides, if you've got this situation where there are two reds on one side, two blues on the other side, then this daughter cell gets the red chromosome, this daughter cell gets the blue chromosomes. If you've got a situation over here where you have got mom and dad, mom and dad, then you're going to end up with one daughter cell having a big, big red chromosome and a little blue chromosome, and this one over here has a big blue chromosome and a little red chromosome. So depending on which side of that metaphase plate a chromosome ends up on, you can get a totally different combination of genetics dropping into the daughter cells. Scientists mathematically represent this situation using the expression 2 to the n power. Now, we've talked about previously that genetics are represented using n and 2n. If an organism is 2n, it is diploid. For humans, our diploid number is 46, so that means that each of the diploid cells in your body has 46 chromosomes in it. Our haploid number is 23, so that means that each of our haploid cells has 23 chromosomes in it. Now, because meiosis produces haploid cells, the possible number of combinations you can get is 2 to the haploid number. So for humans, 2 to the 23rd power, which when you work that out, it works out to about 8.4 million. So that means that each one of your eggs or sperm that you produce is one in 8.4 million possible genetic combinations. The next source of variation that we've talked about previously is crossing over. And this is just kind of a quick refresher for you. Remember that in metaphase one of meiosis, our homologous chromosomes line up next to each other. Sister chromatids hook up at the chiasmata. Where they hook up, they trade some genetic information with each other, resulting in completely new recombinant chromosomes that have not existed before. So you're essentially just like you would take cards and shuffle them before you played a card game. You're doing the same thing here. You got two chromosomes, you shuffle up the genetic material on those two chromosomes. And at the end of crossing over, each one of those chromosomes is absolutely unique. It has not existed in history before. So we now have two ways that we can have variation. One is through independent assortment, where the chromosomes line up and then separate. And you also have got 
crossing over. Now you would say that crossing over happens before independent assortment. So you could say that the deck gets shuffled during crossing over and then it gets further shuffled as those chromosomes independently assort each other. And the last way that we get fertilization, or not fertilization, um, variation that we're going to talk about is random fertilization. So remember that whether you're making eggs or sperm, each one of those eggs or sperm has roughly an 8.4 million, one in 8.4 million chance of having come into existence, and that's not even accounting for crossing over. And so whatever sperm or egg is meeting up with sperm or egg from your partner, each one of those gametes has a 1 in 8.4 million chance of coming into existence. And like I said, that does not account for crossing over. So when that egg and that sperm come together, the resulting zygote has is something like 1 in 70 trillion. You would multiply the 8.4 million times 8.4 million, and you get somewhere around 70 trillion. And that, like I said, does not account for the variation that comes with crossing over either. So when you are told that you are truly unique, you are truly unique. And that would be because of independent assortment, crossing over, and random fertilization. Last thing to talk about today is with regard to evolution, why is variation important? A couple quick things. We're going to have a whole series on evolution later, so I'm not going to get deep into it, but natural selection is the idea of survival of the fittest. Whichever organism is best adapted to an environment will survive and pass on its genetic material. So the only way that this whole idea works is if individuals are actually different from each other. So all that variation that we just talked about, that helps natural selection because individuals that are different, the strong ones survive and pass on their genes, the weaker ones do not have the chance to do so. That is going to lead to the continuation of a species. So if all of the animals in an area were not genetically different, if they were all the same, one disease, one disaster, something like that could wipe every single one of them out. But if you've got individuals that are different and thus better adapted to an environment, it is likely that, let's say, a big disease pandemic comes through. It could kill off all the species except for a couple of individuals who had resistance. So that means that that species will be able to keep going because those individuals had differences in their genetic material. And finally, not the best situation, but a lot of drugs or a lot of, um, I guess, diseases, bacteria, things that make us sick, they become resistant to drugs. We also see bugs become resistant to pesticides and things like that, but that is also because of variation. So in the scenario where you have got a bunch of mosquitoes all living together, pesticide comes through, it's sprayed, it kills all of the mosquitoes except for the few that have got a gene that gives them resistance to that pesticide. Those that survived, they're going to pass that gene for resistance onto their offspring. And over time, you're going to have a situation where all of your mosquitoes have become resistant to this pesticide because some genetic variation back in the day gave some of them resistance to a pesticide and then they pass that on over time until the whole population was resistant to pesticide. Hope you were able to follow all of that. That has been your quick primer to what is variation and how do we get variation and why it's important. This has been the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite. Hopefully we'll see you again. Thank you.